Good evening YouTube, 7 Lives Gaming, game from every angle, back with another PSP emulators video. This time for the SNES, the Super Nintendo. With it being as popular as it is, I thought I'd do one on that. And today the emulators I'll be comparing are not altogether that different really. They're pretty much the same emulator, but just um, sort of a... Uh, I don't know. Can't think of the word. Sort of a sister emulator, if you like. It's it's based off the same emulator, but it's just uh, modified, if you like. So SNES 9X TYLME, ME being Media Engine. If you're using a PSP Slim, then it will just run better. But if you're using a fat PSP like me, then it's disabled, so shouldn't really take any notice of that. And SNES 9X Euphoria. This is the latest one, R2, uh, B5 I think it is. So there's not a lot of difference between them altogether, but I'll go into that now. So we'll just start off with um, the TYL. Apologise in advance for the shaky camera. So we have a little opening video. You can turn this off in the options as well if you just want to, you know, if you wanted to get straight back into, uh, you know, into it straight away. So that's gone onto the uh, ROM screen because I've been using this emulator before. So we'll just load up a ROM. Um, anyone will do. And I will show you the ins and outs of it in a moment. So as you can see, it runs pretty much flawlessly, to be fair. If I can just skip this and I'll be able to show you properly. So the game is Terra Enigma, if you wanted to know what game it was. And it's taking its time. I'm trying to see it runs pretty much flawlessly. No bugs in music, no lagging or anything like that. So if you just press home, it'll take you to the menu screen. That's what we really want to look at. So it's got game, it's got you know, exit, reset snares, etc. Got uh, load state, save state, delete state, import state, you know, that usual thing. Controls, and then it's got video, which is the main one you really want to be looking at. Uh, the engine, and you can change it from, you know, PSP Accelerate with Accurate and Software, or you can just change it to, you know, Accelerated Accurate. I think I've found the uh, Accurate Soft is probably the best one. Depend, it all depends on the game you're using really. Video mode, full screen, smooth in, speed limit, um, limit FPS, you know, frame skip, V-Sync. I wouldn't advise sending V-Sync on because it lags out a lot of games on this emulator. Uh, frame skip zero because there's not really any problems. Sound is just, you know, what you'd expect. PSP clock speed, you can't actually change that in this emulator. Hacking debug menu, which is pretty cool. You can do a lot of things, you know, turn on or off the 
background on the games fast sprites no transparency fix high red high res hidden detail you know you really if you just want to put it on and play games you, you don't really need to uh, mess about with this anyway so but if you know what you're doing you know it's, it's alright to experiment with snapshot you can uh, this this emulator comes standard with uh, background music but I turned it off because it just tends to slow down the menu and everything uh, background effects is pretty much the same pad beep is just you know what it is disable intro message which is the little video you saw so I'll I'll, uh, I'll change that to yes intro animation yes so we'll just change that to no so we'll get straight in there um, Cheats, you know, you can add your raw code, game genie, action replay, gold finger. So you know it's got good cheat compatibility if you if you're into that sort of thing. And then just the credits version info. If you want to load a new game, just click that and obviously load whatever you want. The compatibility rate for the games is pretty much solid. I mean, every one I've tried is run. Some of them, like Castlevania, for instance, uh, requires a lot of things disabled and stuff, so you can play it flawlessly. I mean, it does slow down quite a bit, but that's just you know, it's just each game. They just have to experiment with that. So that pretty much covers it, really, for the. Uh, for the TYL, yeah, it pretty much runs flawlessly. So, R Type 3, one of my personal favourite SNES games. I mean, there's so many SNES games, you know, you sport for choice, really, but you know, I, I do love R Type. So, yeah, it runs, you know. pretty much flawlessly and I just died so yeah but one thing I will say that which is a downfall I will say is that when you want to exit the emulator exit um, when you exit unfortunately the PSP crashes I'm not sure why this is, but it always does it. I've tried loads of things, but you just can't fix it. So I'll just reset to the PSP and show you the next one. Same custom firmware and theme as the other videos. I seem to like it, so there's no need to change it really. Now the next one is uh, I was a bit skeptical of this at first, I must say, because I heard the compatibility was terrible. But actually playing around with it, it seems, you know, from what I've tried, it seems pretty much solid, pretty much on par with the uh, TYL. But I'll just show you that now anyway. So obviously we've got a, a different GFX. Different background. Obviously there's a little box there for box art. But I've tried doing this and I have no idea. You know, I've put pictures on for box art for games and I just cannot work out how to do it so if anybody does know how to actually put box art on the games please do let me know because that would be great so we'll just run a game I've got a lot of Japanese SNES RPGs on here so I'll put a link down below to where you can get them from they're all translated as well so we'll just play a game straight off this is a 
This is a little game I uh, discovered not long ago. A nice platformer. It's a really good game. I think everyone should play it. It's, it is really worth the time. You may have already heard of it. So yeah, again it pretty much runs flawlessly. So we'll just skip that for you. And this is a really good platformer, as you can see. It's in English. It's been fully translated. If, you, if you're into um, Japanese games, you really should check out the website that I've put in the description. Because there is literally hundreds of uh, translated SNES ROMs on. They're not just RPGs, but there's a vast selection of Japanese games you've probably never even played or heard of before that you should give a go because a lot of them are a lot better than most of the mainstream SNES games that have been released in, you know, UK and North America, so Europe. So, I'll just show you this quickly and then I shall give you the ins and outs of the emulator. If it would please uh, put a lengthy tutorial. So, as you can see, it's, um, it's a nice little platform. I'll try playing it with one hand to show you, but for now this is going to work. No, not very well. But, yeah, I may decide to do another video on all these uh, Japanese games. I probably will, actually. Not easy to play with one hand. It runs pretty much flawlessly. Not doing too badly for one-handed player. Um, yeah, not much I can say about the game really, but you just have to try it out. It's really good. So we'll just um, go to the menu. Obviously, it's a lot cleaner than the other one. A nice Mario background behind. So it's pretty much the same layout though. It's um, you know, load game, reset game, etc. The menus are a lot more responsive on this though. Like you have to be really careful because if you just you know, it's really fast. So you know, same again, load state, save state. Pretty much exactly the same as uh, the last time. Controls the same again. Now the video option is a, a hell of a lot simpler. The engine is just either fast, accurate or a prox. There's no, you know, there's no triple option, it's just faster prox, fast accurate and the little description underneath is a lot helpful as well because uh, it tells you for the best speed use the fast engine, if you experience GFX issues try the faster prox engine. So pretty much it, it tells you the best thing to use which the other one didn't. And all these settings come default so you know you don't really have to mess about with any of it full screen smooth in speed limit switch so the frame skip comes default with three but i changed it to zero because i haven't had any i haven't had any reason to to change it at the moment maybe some games v-sync i've put i've turned on on this emulator because it seems to work a lot better and it doesn't actually affect the emulation at all maybe it does on on other games but i haven't actually tried that yet so but yeah at the moment it's, it's fine sounds pretty much the same misc uh, the PSP clock speed can be changed obviously if you change it to 222 megahertz not overclocking it's safe but the battery runs out faster with the other emulator it 
wasn't safe so it was just fixed at 333 so you can change it if you want if you've got a, a better battery than I have uh, view file, hack and debug menus the same as before background music and background effects but no intro movie this time so you can't turn that on or off um, exactly the same cheat support so that's that's another good bonus um, and the about with the credits and version info is the same so and it's pretty much yeah it's uh, overall I'd say this emulator the Euphoria is a lot better if you'd have asked me that before I'd actually tinkered about with it I'd have said no way but now I've actually played with it, it's, it, it is actually a hell of a lot better than 9x uh, TYL and of course this um, Euphoria is signed so if you're still on official firmware you know but you want emulators this you know you can put this on it will work perfectly fine so that's another great bonus and if you exit the emulator does it crash? no it doesn't so that's the, again another good bonus so that was pretty much that's pretty much it really for the snares. I mean, I probably will do another video on all these um, Japanese games because it's definitely worth doing. You know, making people aware if they've never heard of or, or played played the games or heard of them. So I will definitely be doing that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. There will be more coming soon. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you liked it, please you know hit like, hit the thumbs up, even it's not Facebook. Um, you know, please do subscribe if you if you're that generous because you know every little helps and uh, I do appreciate the support. So you know, stick around for if you want to see my other videos. I'll put a link on the top of the videos to see the other emulator videos that I've got. So please watch them as well and like, um, thumbs up even. So thanks for watching. Um, really do appreciate it and have a nice day.